God tells Noah that the earth has become corrupt, so he's going to destroy it. But he's going to save Noah and his family. So he instructs Noah to build a gigantic ark to save his family and the animals. And then God repeats that he's going to destroy all humanity. The dialogue ends with the Torah telling us that Noah did exactly what God commanded him to do, which sounds like high praise. Or is it? Let's put it in context. First, let's go backwards to last week's Torah portion. In Bereshus, Cain, Cain kills his brother, and then God confronts him and Cain defends himself famously and notoriously by saying, am I my brother's keeper? There are those who say that the entire rest of the Torah is meant to answer that question. Yes, you are. Now let's fast forward a little bit to a scene we're going to see soon in the Torah. God tells Abraham, Avraham, that the people of Sodom and the neighboring cities have become corrupt, and so God's going to destroy them all. Avraham immediately starts lawyering. God, are you going to destroy the righteous along with the wicked? Suppose I find 50 righteous people. God says, all right, if you find 50, I won't destroy them. Avraham says, what if there's only one missing from each city? How about 45? God says, all right, 45. Avraham says, how about 40? Can we do 40? God says, all right, Avraham, 40. Avraham says, look, I don't want to wear out my welcome, but how about 30? God says, okay, 30. Avraham says, 20? God says, okay, Avraham, 20. Avraham says, can I speak just once more? How about 10 people? God says, okay, I'll save the city if you find 10 people. And then let's fast forward again. The Jews build the golden calf. God tells Moshe that he's going to destroy the Jewish people because of that infraction. And Moshe immediately starts arguing. He says, God, what will they say in Egypt? They'll talk about how you took your people out only to destroy them in the desert. It won't look good for you. And then later, when he's trying to get complete atonement for the Jewish people, Moshe says, God, if you're not going to forgive them, then wipe my name out of your book. Moshe is willing to walk away from everything. How can you have the five books of Moses without Moses? Now let's go back to our story. Noah is told by God twice that he's going to destroy the entire world. And we don't have a single peep recorded from Noah's mouth. Instead, Noah does exactly what God told him, building the ark. The sages tell us that he built that ark for 120 years. Why? To give people the chance to repent. But maybe it was also to give Noah the chance to argue. Maybe if Noah had lawyered it up like Avraham and said, God, can I bring 50 people with me in the ark? How about 45, 40, 30, 20, 10? Maybe he would have been able to save some people. Or maybe if like Moshe, he had said, no, God, I'm not building the ark unless you let me take some people with me. Maybe he would have been able to save some of his fellow humankind. But instead, he doesn't even make the attempt. And so he's got to hear and suffer the screams of humanity in his ears. Screams that he may have heard for the rest of his life. There must be something we can do. We can drag ropes. There is no room for that. This day, the flood is linked to his name. It's called May Noah, the flood waters of Noah. Even jokingly, if someone wears their pants too short, they may hear someone say, Hey, Noah, flood's over. Oh, I hate these flood pants. Hey, they're working. My feet are soaked, but my cuffs are bone dry. It bears his name to teach us that if you have the opportunity to try to help someone, to help your brother, and you don't, you bear some responsibility. And who knows, maybe God sent that person to you because you were the key to helping him out. Mm -hmm.